Hello, Contigo users. So, I want to demonstrate the Genitive Shape Design Workbench's Blend tool. So, Blend is very much like a lofted feature or a multi-suction feature, except it only uh, allows for uh, for uh, two suctions. Um, so, GSD Workbench. I have two geometric sets. I've got one for my sketches and one for my surfaces. And surfaces is currently the working location. So I've got the blend tool, which is a surface in the GSD workbench. So it goes between two curves, first curve, second curve, with an optional support. I will provide the support. Support allows for the control of continuity between the surfaces. So I'm going to go from my first curve, which is going to be the sketch. You could also go to an edge if you wanted to. I prefer wireframe entities or boundaries. So I'm going to go to here, and then I'm going to immediately pop down and select this as my support, which is going to allow me to create a level of continuity between the two surfaces. And then the second side, I'm going to select there and pop over and select that as my support. So notice the direction of my arrow. So these are open. This is an open. This is an open blend. It's not a closed. So closing points are not nearly as important. There are options for setting your closing points if you wanted to, but it's going in the same direction. So I feel fairly confident that I don't have to worry about that right now. The coupling mode, I always prefer and require my students to do something better than ratio. Ratio will calculate the coupling and the coupling is how uh, the sections are blended together, typically via points. So I, I, I tend to tell my students to shoot for tangency then curvature because it provides the best surface. I think that's going to work fine here without having to do any type of manual coupling mode. And I'm not going to worry about a spine here. I'm just going to take the default calculated spine. So making sure I'm checking my coupling mode, coupling mode, closing points I think will be fine. Um, and then pop over to the first tab here, which is the basic tab. So uh, by default, uh, since I do have tangency support, you got your three levels of tangency, G0, G1, and G2, point, tangency, curvature. I'm going to start off with point on each side and none for the tangent, tangent boundary, and then I'll discuss this. So there's my um, blend, which is just really just a straight surface with a G0 edge between each side. I want to throw on a porcupine analysis, what I call, not a porcupine analysis, I apologize, what I call a zebra analysis. Now, I can tell you that's a uh, Isofotes, I think that's how you pronounce that, and that's in the freestyle workbench, but I brought it over to this workbench because I use it quite a bit. So I'm going to pre-select these three. I could join them together, but I'd rather really keep them separate now. And then select this, and you can see I've got it already kind of preset the way I like it, but you can adjust these parameters to get the zebra stripe that you prefer. But notice what's happening here. I want to hide my sketches. And notice what's happening. So you got G, G0 continuity across this surface. So notice how the zebra's stripes are not lining up at all. So they're just kind of going on their own. This is a poor continuity. It's G0, of course. So if you want G0, that's fine. But where will you find that in a true surface model? You need, at least, at least I tell my students, G1 or better continuity. And I prefer G2, which is the highest the GSD will go. But uh, right now that's G0, and I would, you know, for the benefit of my students, I, I want them to see the, how they can analyze these surfaces with a zebra stripe analysis to see what's happening. So I'm going to try to leave this on as long as it's not interfering with what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to leave this unhidden. So let's go back to my blend, and I'm going to change these to G1 on just the edges. So G1, G1. Now let's go back to my porcupine analysis. And you can see at least, at least, if you can see here, the stripes are lining up. And at least they come together and, and meet each other. Now the meeting is not smooth. This is a G1 continuity, so it's not going to have great reflections, but it will have much better reflections than you're getting from G0. So this is my minimum expectations for my students. So I'm going to go to the other side and and I did make the other side. Um, so I've got G1 on both sides. Now, there's an extra option here. So it is G1 across the edges, but it's not G1 on the boundary. So, which is interesting, or what Katia refers to as a border. So this edge to this edge is G0. 
and it's kind of hard to see but that's the way it's currently setting is the edge but you can adjust that and you can set that to be the edge also be G1 and that's the tangent borders so for my first tangent border I'm going to go both extremes um, I do both extremes unless I have a reason to only do one side and then the other one um, and notice, how, it's, notice how, how you have both none starter in and that deals with the arrow direction for your coupling direction so I'm going to do both extremes and let's see, see if you notice that I, I should have probably slowed that down I'll go back to none here notice how that moves my surface I'm going to go back to both extremes and look what happens here you can see that's coming tangent so that helps with the border edges and notice you do get a more of a s shaped curve or what I refer to as a degree three type of curve going between here which is very very helpful now what I want to do is I'm going to change this to be um, G2 so I'll go with curvature on both sides and before I hit preview you can kind of watch the screen and see what happens see how it updates you see how it updates now the zebra stripe is coming smoother to each other so the zebra stripe looks like it's going g1 the stripes are g1 if you will it's kind of hard to, to describe but the stripes are coming smooth at least smooth with each other but that's that is a g2 continuity would have a much better reflection so let's look at it from the kind of the side here so i'm going to go back to tangent and tangent and do a preview you can see how it adjusts so right here it's just tangent and then the rate of change isn't related to each other tangent and then different rate of change so here now when i pop back to g2 do a preview it comes tangent and then the rate of change so it has the same radius when it starts off so same radius here when it starts off and then it blends if it had g3 which it doesn't it would even be a little more smooth but you can simulate g3 in katia but i'm not going to talk about that today and what i called implied g3 so that's a nice um, g2 with some kind of showing the reflections if you will now if your curve was not on the end of your support surface there are some trim options available that could uh, trim off what you're trying to accomplish so I'm going to hide my um, mapping here and I'm going to go back to my surface and one thing I wanted to show you here was you do have tension control so um, so right now it's set a tension of one on both sides and this doesn't affect the continuity it just makes it look like it affects the continuity so notice how I can this is curved the first curve which is on this side so as I pull this I wish it was I wish it was more um, would update dynamically but notice as I pull it watch what happens when I hit preview kind of st sticks out a little more let me back that down a bit and you can back to one you can see how it changes so it's not affecting the continuity it's still g2 I think is what I had it said idea g2 uh, so you can pull it and then what I mentioned you can pull it and get it closer to G3 approaching G3 let's call it that so let's look at the other side now I can pull it a few notches there and it's like pulling the tension of a rope or you can decrease it below one up to zero then eventually then you get an error message but, so you can adjust that and control your design work um, within the bounds of what's happening now also you can flip these arrows and it will just for demo here you can flip it back the other direction and then flip it back and if you, if that's what you're looking for so um, this is a nice quick and hopefully a nice quick introduction to um, the blend tool in Katia I use it quite a bit you can do a lot of the same stuff with the multi sections surface tool as well but sometimes it's nice to get in and um, just do the blend tool. So I require my students to use a blend tool on occasion just to get them used to it. Thanks and have a great day.